Okay, so a lot of our angles and measuring of angles is going to have to be happening on CERN because I can't give you this through the computer screen. I can't give you a protractor. Um, and I'm still looking for a virtual one that you could use on the computer that I like, but I haven't really found it yet. So for today's lesson, it's going to just be like a conceptual or like a, an understanding about angles and how they work and how you can estimate angles because I can't give you the tool that you would need to measure it precisely. So mostly I just want you to walk away from today's lesson understanding how to judge an angle and know approximately how big it should be. And we're going to do that by talking about benchmark angles, which I know was a portion of your Zern lessons. Um, I wanted to do it on Khan Academy, but I didn't have many of you sign up last week. And um, by looking more into it, it does seem a lot like Zern. So we're just going to get through a little bit of the protractor stuff and then move on um, because that's all we can do. Okay, so I do have some steps. Um, using protractors is easy as one, two, three. You can do it in three steps. You, I know you don't have a protractor in, in hand, but these are the steps you would use when you're lining it up on CERN as well. So you have to line up the vertex, which the vertex is where your two lines of an angle come together. So wherever those two lines meet or those two rays meet, um, that is called your vertex. Right here, this is the vertex. Then you have to follow. You follow the bottom line to the edge and across the top to the other line. So I would take my protractor. I would line up the vertex to the midpoint of my protractor. And then I would follow the bottom line to the edge of my protractor and then up and around to my other line. That's steps one and two. Step three is notice and record what number does my line touch. So I'd follow it out, follow it over, and I would see that this line lands on 100 degrees. So then I would write down 100 degrees. And this little circle raised in the air, that means degrees, okay? Okay, next, um, talking about how you could understand that this is 100 degrees without actually having a protractor. So if you think about a benchmark angle, pull you closer so you can see that with me. We know that an angle that looks like this is worth 90 degrees. It's a right angle, it's 90 degrees. So if I were to use this benchmark angle of 90 degrees, that would look like this. I know that that is a 90 degree angle. So looking at my actual line, my black line for the angle that I had to measure, would we estimate that it is greater than 90 or less than 90 when we measure this angle? Based on this benchmark angle, should our real measurement be greater than or less than 90. Other um, benchmark angles we have is a 45 degree angle, which is dead in the middle of 90 degrees and zero degrees. So another benchmark angle would be straight between, and that would be 45 degrees. Taking it further than that, if you go out the other direction, this one would be 135. So we know that this angle would have to be somewhere in between 90 and 135, but we would estimate that it would be closer to 90 because it's closer to the right angle line. And I'm gonna show you more of those in a moment. This is just quick, brief understanding. Okay, for this section over here, I have this little cool tool I created that you could also create at home. And all I did was I took two circles. Well, they weren't circles. They were 
pieces of paper and I traced circles onto them and then I cut them out so they would be the same size and on one I sectioned it off into four pieces and on the other I just drew a line halfway across. You could do the same, you don't have to, but it may help you. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my circle that doesn't have the four corners on it and put it on top of the one that does. After that, what I'm going to do is I cut slit and a slit into both and I am going to line it up this way and now I'm going to show you that as I turn my blue, the yellow starts to show through. So before I started turning it, Before I started turning it, it looked like this, couldn't see any yellow. And then what I did is I started to feed the yellow through it. So we're going to pretend that the yellow is our angle. So these lines here are showing our angle and the yellow portion in between it is the one that we're measuring. So if we open up to our first quarter mark, and I'll know it's a quarter because I'll get to that line, what do you notice? about this angle. Based on the angles we've learned about so far, how many degrees do you think this one is worth and what is it called? Quick check for understanding. Okay, yes, this is a 90 degree angle, which is called a right angle. So we know that each quarter of a turn, this is one fourth, right? We, cut it, we colored four lines, one fourth, is worth how many degrees? Well, that makes it a right angle, so we know it's worth 90 degrees. Now, if we turned it to go to our next quarter line, now how much of our circle is showing yellow? How much of our circle is yellow now? Half of it. So now we know two quarters is equal to one half. So if we have 90 degrees here, what do you notice about this other side? It's also 90 degrees. So we have two 90 degree angles. What we can do is we can just add those together. So if this is 90 and this is 90, I know that 90 times two is how many degrees? If we're multiplying by a tens number, all you can do is add a zero to the end. So you think nine times two with a zero at the end. So what is, how many degrees is half of a circle worth? We're thinking of 92 times. Drop your answer. And if you said that it's equal to 180 degrees, You are correct, because if you also notice, we have a straight angle here. We would just be talking about the yellow. So if our line starts here and ends here, that's a straight line. We're measuring from here to here. It's straight. A straight angle is 180 degrees. Each degree would be equal to how many? Well, let's keep going. If we have three quarter turns, that would be 93 times. What is 93 times? Well, I know nine times three is, and with a zero at the end, so I know that 93 times is equal to 270. So three quarters of a full circle is 270 degrees. If we do it one more time, we'll have our whole circle out now, our whole yellow circle, this is measuring the entire circle, that would be 90 and 90 and 90 and 90. What is 9 times 4 with a 0 at the end because it's really 90? So 90 times 4 is equal to how many degrees? How many degrees does it take to go in a full circle? Drop what you think. 
And if you said 360, you are correct. It takes 360 degrees to make a full circle. Or in other words, when Bobby is on a skateboard and he does a 360, what does he do? He goes all the way around. And when Bobby is on a skateboard and he does a 180, what does he do? He goes halfway around. So if he does a 360, he would start this way. 360. Start up. 90, 90, 90, 90, that would be 360 degrees. If he does a 180, here I am, 90, 90, that's 180, he's just turning and facing the other direction. So 360 will get you back to the front, 90 gets you one direction, 180 gets you backwards, if I could turn all the way around, 270 gets me facing the other way, and 360 brings me back to the front. <sighs> Understand. Okay, so now we're gonna drop off into a little bit more practice. I'm gonna put something on the whiteboard. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, welcome back. So I have gone ahead and put some practice problems up on this board to do a couple of checks for understanding of how to use benchmark angles to estimate the angle, the degrees of an angle. Okay, so we have three practice problems. And on this side, we have um, a little cheat sheet quick here to use as our benchmark angles, which are the ones that we will be referencing to help us answer these questions. So the first angle we have here is at the top. And I know that this angle should be familiar to all of us by now. So I want to know how many degrees is an angle that looks like this worth? It's called a right angle. How many degrees is, how many degrees are in a right angle? Drop your answer. If you said 90, snaps to you, you are correct. The next one we have is an acute angle. This acute angle though is more specific than just being acute. It is half of our right angle. So if you, we are going to think about what is half of 90, you would just do what is 90 divided by two. What is 90 divided by two? What is halfway between zero and 90? Select your answer. If you said 45, you are correct. Halfway between zero and 90 is 45. So angles that look like this are 45 degrees. And then we have this one down here. This is our straight angle. It's from zero to this other side over here. We know that up here is 90, and that's another 90 degree turn based on our single practice that we just did. So how many degrees are in two quarter turns? If one quarter turn is worth 90 degrees, another quarter turn is worth another 90 degrees, how many degrees are in a straight angle? Select your answer. If you said 180, you are correct. And then lastly, we have this big old huge looking thing. And it's not on the inside, because I know if you're looking at that, you're like, that just looks like a right angle but upside down. You're correct. This side is worth 90 degrees. That's all that is left to take to get to a full circle. But what we're looking at is not the 90 degrees at the bottom. We're not looking at this blue here. We are looking at the yellow that goes around the outside. We are measuring the degrees of the yellow angle, not the blue. You're right if you thought that blue looks 90 degrees right here. We want to measure the outside. So three quarters of a circle. So we have 90, 90, 90. What is 93 times? What would this angle be worth? Select your answer. If you said 270, good job. You are correct. So these are the benchmark angles, benchmark angles we are going to be using to help us 
measure these angles. And we're not going to measure them exactly, but we're going to estimate. Um, so, shall we do this? I want to know. My black marker go? Oh, here it is. <laughs> looking at this first angle and looking at our benchmark angles, so our options are 90, 45, 180, and 270, which one would make the most sense to use to help us estimate this? Pick. If you said 45 degrees, good choice. If we, actually I don't want to use this. I'll use purple. If we are going to use the reference angle of 45 degrees, we would know that 45 degrees is halfway in between 0 and 90. And this looks like it's about halfway, but in my eyes, it seems like this portion is a little bit bigger than this portion. And if it was a 45 degree angle, both sides would be equal. So we know that it's going to be bigger or smaller than 45 if this is larger than half. It's going to be bigger. It's going to be bigger than 45 degrees. So looking at this, we could estimate it's going to be close to 45 and it's not going to be 90. So what could we, what's a number we could pick that's close to 45, but a little bit bigger, but definitely not 90. What's, what's something that would make sense for this? About 50? Let's say about 50. Using our benchmark angles of 90 and 45, we could estimate that this one is about 50 degrees, give or take. Okay, let's look at our next practice. Looking at this, and notice we're measuring the outside here, which benchmark angle or angles would make sense for us to use as a reference point? Select your answers. And if you said 100, between 180 and 270, those are good choices. We know that if we extend this straight out, that would give us 180. And we know if we extend this straight down, that would give us 270. So we know that this angle is between 180 and 270. It also looks like it's about halfway in between a right angle. So if we know that halfway between a right angle is, 100, is 45 degrees, and this is 180 degrees, and this is 270 degrees, this one looks like it's about 45 degrees larger than this one. So if I were to use my benchmark angles to estimate this, I would go ahead and say that it looks like it's this angle plus this angle, which would get me to about 225 degrees. The last one we're going to do is down here. I want you to look at this and look at these and decide which benchmark angle it would make sense to use as an estimation strategy. Pick it. And if you think that it makes sense to estimate it based on its closeness to being 180 degrees, I agree with you. Our closest benchmark angle to this one would probably be a straight angle. But because it's up here, is it going to be greater than or less than 180? Less than. It's going to be less than 180. Because we know that if this is 90 and this is 180, it's in between 90 and 180, but closer to 180. So we could estimate that maybe it's about, it's not halfway. Because if it was halfway, that would mean it was about 135. So let's go with like 100 and 
50 degrees. Because halfway in between these two would be another 45 degrees. So 90 plus 45 would be 135. So we know that it has to be bigger than 135, but less than 180, so about 150. All right, so that is how we use reference angles. So your assignment today is I'm going to just put some angles on slides and you're gonna use these benchmarks to help you estimate what you think that they are worth, okay?